another gray water irrigation system um, used applied to grass. We have the aquifer pipe placed under this grass and that's what helps us distribute the, the gray water. This grass actually has two types of grasses. Um, right, we seeded it with a rye grass for the winter time, but you can also see the, the St. Augustine grass, which is the preferred grass for the gray water system because it has these runners. So the water can be at one location, but yet the runners will run out to the different area, other areas. The rye grass, which is um, what's called a bunch grass, it sets roots into one area and just will have, just that grass will be a patch right there. So it has to be nice and dense to have a nice good coverage. If you get any of the grasses that die, then you'll end up with brown spots, kind of like what you see over here. You can see how the St. Augustine is moving out towards the edges, but once you lose the bunch grass, it's, it's basically a brown spot or a dead spot that needs to be replanted. So this is the gray water system itself, the tank or surge tank. And this is the incoming line from the laundry. This happens to be, the laundry happens to be downstairs in the basement. And the second line right here is what we call a vacation valve. So it's basically an air gap. The water pours in there through the PVC and it's on a timer. So when the homeowner takes off on vacation, the timer will be set to let water flow through that pipe and into the system every day um, for about five minutes on a gradual basis. It's not a very fast flow. Actually, I could probably turn it on and see how it looks by turning this. I can see how the flow is. It's fast enough to fill up the tank and let it flow by gravity down into the system. Have the shut off valve. So, the way we typically will set it up is we'll set up the valve to be on all the time and we'll turn the valve off and when they go on vacation they just turn the valve on so this is the filter let's see how how, how much use is in you can see how much use is on that filter this family has a dog so it gets pretty uh, pretty well used up and then it has to be thrown out there's two filters in there just because when you buy the filters, they come in enough sizes to put two. And so we put two of them down and just pull one out and throw it away. And that way you already have a second one in place. See, there's a little bit of water still in in there. It's because the the pipe itself is a little bit high and the, and the, and the tank is angled kind of backwards. So, just readjust that right now while we're here. That's about it. We're gonna, oh, the, these brown spots are mainly because the pipe doesn't start until farther in, in, in this direction. So, the, that's a lear lesson learned. We have to bring the pipe all the way to the full edge of where we want the water to go because there's only caterpillar action and flow in a kind of a, in a perpendicular to the pipe. So let's go downstairs and see what it looks like downstairs. Okay, we're downstairs and you can see the pipe from the washer right here. And it goes up and we just punched it out the side there and that cable is actually the cable for the valve electronic valve so this case the the washer pumps it up an additional almost three feet so typically we'd only go up one foot and but this one goes up three feet and out into that to the the surge tank and this particular house also it's a hundred year old house so in most cases, the water would just get put into the sink, which is right next door. Um, 
that's I've seen that in a number of older houses that they didn't have a dedicated pipe for the location. So that's it inside the house. Well, I did want to mention that this doesn't have a three-way valve because this family doesn't does not use bleach at all. So that's um, that was their choice. But at some point, if they move out and they want to keep the gray water system, then a three-way valve will be needed to be placed into this into the system.